Okay, back on the Sony ICF 2010. It's been a few days since I started the first part of the video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this board out of here because when I was editing, I noticed that the other ribbon cable may have been partially unplugged. So I thought I'd get back in here and see if I can get it plugged back in. Okay, both ribbon cables have been seated. Let's go ahead and power it up and see if the power button works now. And I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on the memory backup batteries just so they have a less of a chance of falling out. All right, so let's go ahead and plug the power adapter back into it. Remember, I have to lift it up and support the board. Okay, well it came on and the power is on. The battery indicator does work. I hear sound, let's tune a local station. And that does operate. Now, the most important thing, does the power switch work? Oh my goodness. Oh. It turned off and then back on. Oh, I think it's just got a bad switch. Yeah, because it did work momentarily. Interesting. Well, let me get a schematic up, find out where the power switch actually goes. Okay, so here is the block diagram of the power switch, S502. So you see pin eight and pin nine that feed into the main control, IC501, the microprocessor. So that is pulled up via a 1K resistor to the three volt power supply line. So when you select timer power, pin eight is pulled up to three volts. When you select radio timer power, pin nine is pulled up to three volts. When the unit is turned off, pin eight and pin nine should be effectively pulled down to zero volts. Let's take a look at the schematic. So here you can see the power switch circuitry I have circled in red. R549, the top side connects to the positive three volt line. Pin 9 is connected via a 1 megohm resistor to ground. Pin 8 is connected via both a 1 megohm resistor and a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor to ground. So those should be continuously pulled to ground. So here is the power switch. And then here are the two 1 megohm resistors, R556 and R557. I need to find those and measure the resistance to ground when the unit is turned off. Preferably, I'd like to find them and measure the voltage across them when the unit's turned on and off to see if there's any change. Well, I certainly didn't intend to go down this rabbit hole, but here we are. So the good news is, if I tip this up right here, look what lives underneath, the power switch. So I can actually just make measurements right on the switch right there. So I've got the radio powered on and I can go ahead and measure the three volt source right there and it's perfectly fine. Oh, look at that. It turned off and back on. So let's put it to the on position. I'll measure the top pin. I think that's gonna be the timer input. Yep, there it is, timer on. So now we know where this is three volts. So this one right here has to be the power on off switch. There's the problem. On, three volts, off, 2.7. When I had it tipped up, I noticed a little bit of gunk down here in the power switch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try to clean in between the leads and see if it makes any difference. Well, that certainly seemed to do it. Power on. It's got audio, power off. All right, let's go ahead and hook up the three volt power supply. Turn the main power on, and we'll go ahead and measure that pin. I see 0, 0.00 with power on 3.026. Power off, power on, timer. It's working perfect. Just some crud on the circuit board, conductive no less. Well, I think that's gonna be it. I just gotta get it back together now. Well, I got it mostly back together and still had the problem. So next, I'm gonna pull the power switch off the board and see if there's anything underneath it. All right, power switch is unsoldered. Let's see if it's gonna cooperate and 
come off the board easily. Yes. Well, there is the bottom of the power switch. It doesn't look really good. Let's take a look at the bottom of the circuit board and see what it looks like. Well, I do see something around one of those pins and I think that's the power pin. So I'm gonna have to clean it off with a little magical solution acetone. All right, well, I don't know what that was on the circuit board, but I probably should have measured it with the ohmmeter first, but it looked conductive. Maybe some soda got spilled in there at some time, but take a look at that bright green circuit board now, much better than before. So let's take a look at the terminal side now. Well, there is the terminal side, cleaned up with some more magical solution acetone. Looks absolutely like the day it was born. So let's go ahead and clean the bottom of the switch the same exact way, just to get anything off of it. Well, whatever might have been on there, I think I've got it off. It looks much better. There definitely was something sticky on there that really didn't want to come off, but the terminals look absolutely perfect now. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble the unit now and see what happens. But before I do that, I'm going to make a mess. I'm going to shoot it with some deoxid. All right, all cleaned up. Now we'll put it back in the unit and see what happens. Okay, switch is reinstalled. Let's go ahead and solder it back in place now. All right, there we go. Looks excellent. Once again, some magical solution acetone. You can clean the carbon impregnated rubber pads if you're quick, otherwise you have to recoat them. But as long as you don't let it soak on there, I've been using acetone to clean these things for years. Never had a problem, probably 30 plus years at this point. All right, here we go. Power on. We've got display. Had the RF gain turned down. Power switch. Timer switch. There it is. Up and running. Do we still have FM? We have FM. That's awesome. Do we hear noise on air? I don't have any signals in my area, but yes, I hear noise on air. It's working great. AM's working, FM's working. There's KFI AM 640. That station is 500 miles away from me. This thing is picking up signals, no problem. But anyhow, that's it. The repair on the Sony ICF 2010. No power switch operation. No LED, no station, it's up and running. Another one saved from the recycle bin. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to all the questions when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. I even replaced the two missing screws. And yes, the unit does work on batteries.